Please welcome Jim Henson. When it comes to the question of why did Jim Henson not become Walt Disney, there's a lot to it because both were very successful from a young age. Actually, Jim Henson was more successful at 17 all the way to his 20s. You know, Walt Disney struggled through his 20s to get his cartoon company launched, but Jim Henson was pretty much always successful. You, But there are comparisons in a lot of ways that I found very interesting. So let's dive deep into these parallels and maybe we'll, we'll find out some interesting things about why Jim Henson did not become the next Walt Disney and what stopped him. When Walt Disney was 53, he was building and opening the Disneyland theme park. Why does that matter? Well, Jim Henson died when he was 53 years old, the same exact age. And when I saw that parallel, I went, wow, this is kind of incredible because both of them were very creative and very ambitious at these times in their lives. And it almost seemed like their ambition was growing by the time they reached these ages. Uh, Walt Disney lived another 10 plus years, but Jim Henson died very suddenly from pneumonia. And it's very frustrating in the, especially in the way Brian J. Jones constructs that narrative, the way that Jim Henson was so obviously sick and dying, but he would not go to the doctors. And there are a lot of theories about that if it's tied to his Christian science upbringing, but he did not get seen when he was coughing up blood for multiple days in a row. And by the time he went to the hospital, it was within a few more hours that he was in a coma and eventually died. So in many ways, Jim Henson was making an equal impact to Walt at this point in his life. And let's pull a Citizen Kane here and start with Jim Henson's death and go all the way back to the beginning of his successful career. Just like Walt Disney, Jim Henson stumbled into a successful career in family entertainment unintentionally. Walt Disney was into cartooning and advertisement, but both of them kind of seemed to stumble into it. They didn't wake up going, this is the thing I want to do with my life. Certainly not a career that one would plan. You know, you wouldn't decide to become a puppeteer, I don't think, uh, in your life. Uh, I was I was interested in television and films and art, and actually, then what? When I went into puppetry, I found that I could combine all of this stuff. In the same way, Walt Disney saw business opportunities in cartoon shorts. I mean, artistically, he was also very motivated by it, but even maybe more so than Jim Henson was by puppets. But you know, Walt Disney saw, okay, this is a way for me to get in the film industry. And so he started his company and tried out different characters, just like Jim Henson. And eventually he stumbled into the creation of Mickey Mouse. What's the appeal that your puppets have? Oh boy, it's, it's hard to say. I think, um, well, I think puppets have a kind of appeal to kids, to adults. They've been around forever. You know, as long as we've had theater, we've had one kind or another of puppetry. But uh, I don't know, I, I think with the Muppets, there's, there's sort of an innocence to them, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think uh, that's something that appeals to the child and everybody, you know? Because yeah. I think everybody, there's, there's a child in all of us still. Now, what's interesting is how the Muppets appeal to the child in all of us. And this 100% could be said of Walt Disney's creations. Both of them capture childhood in, a, in just such a perfect way that connected with so many millions of people. Hello, Mickey. Are you in there? What? Is that you? <laughs> Come on in. Gosh, it sure is swell to see all the Muppets here at Walt Disney World. Here are three ways that Kermit and Mickey are very closely linked to their creators, Jim Henson and Walt Disney. Let's get into it. Both characters were created to experiment with new innovations in their format. Puppetry at the time was on television, it was in cartoons, but it was never used in the way that Kermit was, especially the proscenium being the television frame rather than an actual proscenium being filmed. 
Jim Henson saw if he framed his characters within the proscenium of the television's aspect ratio, he could create new stories and use puppets in a way that hadn't been done before. Mickey Mouse was also innovative in many ways, but the number one way other than the use of sound in his cartoons, which everyone knows, is that Mickey Mouse was essentially the first character that really captured this human-like star power. Cartoons up until that point, they had personalities, but they didn't capture emotion in the way that Mickey Mouse did. Mickey Mouse was innovative in the way that he, as a character, portrayed the, the personality that Walt gave him. The second point is both characters would be voiced and acted by their creators. Kermit was famously operated by Jim Henson. Jim Henson even had a similar voice to Kermit. He kind of talked in his throat and he would occasionally hmm all the time. He was very similar to Kermit and saw himself in Kermit in many ways. Well, Mickey Mouse was voiced by Walt Disney and Walt it's Disney me, saw himself <laughs> in the character. They both saw each of their characters as extensions or representations of themselves and their personality came through those characters. The third and final point is that both of them became merchandise juggernauts that completely obliterated all other competition when it came to merchandise. I mean, you can look at the numbers. Kermit and Mickey Mouse, but especially Mickey Mouse more than Kermit, have generated millions upon millions of dollars. So there you have it, three ways that Mickey and Kermit are very similar. And of course, those reflect the creators. And you can see the similarities between both of them. Now, the next way that Jim Henson and Walt Disney were similar is that both of them were great businessmen. They were both financially extremely successful from young ages. According to Brian J. Jones, on August 17th, 1984, Jim acquired all of his Muppet properties from Holmes Accord for $6.5 million. He knew that this was the only way for him to maintain ownership and control over his characters in the long run. This was like a George Lucas, Star Wars kind of move. This was some gangster stuff. He knew he had to take control and that's one of the things that propelled his, his business, the Muppets Corporation or the Jim Henson Corporation into future success. According to his daughter, Lisa Henson, she said they would have no company if he had not done that. That quote is also from the book. Frank Oz also said on the Disney deal that Jim Henson was working on at the time of his death, Jim felt he could be Walt Disney. Frank Oz was Jim's closest collaborator and he saw the parallels. And even though we'll see that, um, that Jim Henson kind of denied wanting to be Walt Disney, Frank Oz kind of had a different perspective on it. So that's an interesting parallel that, that you see as he's selling the company off, he's thinking of these big picture ideas. And we're gonna get into that. What was Jim Henson attempting to accomplish at the time of his unfortunate death? What went wrong? Well, let's find out. These are the key differences. These are the reasons why Jim never reached the, um, the cultural landmark that Walt Disney has. Of course, Jim Henson is so important to our culture around the world. And The Muppets is an incredible contribution to entertainment history and educational history and so many other things, right? But he didn't build Disneyland and he didn't make a company that is that level of power. Of course, Disney owns The Muppets, so there is a difference in legacy. One of the things I noticed was uh, Jim Henson, in, which this is a good thing in a lot of ways and it's admirable, but he was definitely averse to excessive marketing and merchandising. He had been throttled into finally putting Sesame Street up for merchandising, but that took a while. His business partners would urge him saying, "What? why are we not selling Sesame Street merch? This is in the height of Sesame Street's success. And he didn't really want to. It's kind of amazing because he didn't see a need to just make more money. For him, it was, there always had to be a creative reason. So just merchandising his characters didn't really make sense to him because in his heart, he was an artist. So they showed him the numbers and said, we have to do this because financially, this is just crazy not to. And, and he agreed to do it, but he maintained the quality and had to okay every single merchandise product that was created for Sesame Street. So that's that just shows his character. Now, Walt Disney, of course, was concerned with quality, but from the beginning, Walt Disney was merchandising his characters, and he did that in a very successful way and was able to build an entire empire around merchandising. 
Here's something that Jim Henson said about Walt Disney that kind of highlights their key differences. Jim said, I'm slightly uncomfortable with the idea of becoming Walt Disney, but I don't particularly want to do what he did. He built this huge empire. When you build something that big, I think it's hard to control the quality of everything you do. Now that's also from the Brian J. Jones book. You can see this aversion to making this massive corporate structure. It's admirable and it's, it shows Jim Henson's heart it was about quality, it was about value. And he thought he would lose that if he just merchandised all of his characters. It was never about the money for Jim Henson. That's the key. Um, and not that it was for Walt Disney, but there seemed to be a difference in approach and willingness to, to create an empire. There's a difference. Jim Henson was, had very successful characters in many ways, just as successful as Mickey Mouse and all the Mickey characters. Jim Henson's Muppets were hugely successful. The Muppet Show was the biggest show in the world when it was in its peak and throughout most of its seasons. It was a huge show. So you could easily see how that could have been extrapolated and, and continue to build. And then on top of that, you have Sesame Street. So yeah, the, it's just a difference in approach and a difference in values. And not that either one was right or wrong. It's just, these are just facts that I'm compiling to compare and contrast. And I, I found it really interesting to dive deep into this. As I mentioned, Jim Henson died at the exact same age that Walt Disney opened Disneyland. Around the time of Jim Henson's death, Jim Henson wanted to, to start creating theme park rides for Disneyland and Disney World. So maybe he would have become this theme park creator and would have become another Walt Disney because Walt Disney had another 10 years after building the park to do more and to plan more. And even Walt Disney died before he was able to accomplish his biggest dream, Epcot. So when you look at these stories, I mean, it's all speculation, but you just think, man, what if Walt lived another 10 years and he was able to see Epcot to completion? What if Jim Henson lived another 30 years, you know, to eight, his 80s or 90s? What would we have had? Would we have had more movies like The Dark Crystal and Labyrinth, more shows and more theme park rides? I don't know, but it's it can be frustrating. It's like, man, these... These guys were so prolific, they were so creative. We could speculate forever and ever, thinking what would have happened if they didn't die when they died. But in the end, both people were great artists, they were great businessmen, and they created characters that people connect to in such a deep and profound way. Both Mickey Mouse and Kermit are characters that are so important to so many kids and so many childhoods. And there's just so many lessons to learn from both of these figures, both positive and negative lessons. So this was just a great way for me to, to internalize all of these thoughts that I've had and learn more about these two figures. I hope that you got something out of it too that you learned with me. Look, these are things that I'm just learning right now in my life, but I'm so excited about them. And I wanted to share them with the internet. And if you enjoyed it, I'm really happy to hear that. I hope you can subscribe and and just if you can let me know what you feel works and what you feel doesn't work about these videos, that would be awesome. So thank you again so much for watching this to the end and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.